Yes, hello folks, it's Peter Elgar here, the funny old film bloke from Brentwood, Essex in England. But welcome back to my channel, and we are back on the Russian theme. It's Red October, after all, last day of October, but we just got it in in time. Now this is a Russian theme day because um, I've been loaned this one. It's a Fed Mark III loaned from a camera club member who got it in a boot sale for three pound. Now this is my one I own, a Fed Mark IV, and I've done a video about it, but we'll have a look at the quick differences first that I've found. One of them is quite strange. The first one you can notice is that this one has a built-in light meter, of course. Here's the window for the light meter here, but this one doesn't have a light meter. So on the top, you have a light meter adjustment here for where you input your GOST or your ASA values and the little needle swings in there. This one, you just have a rewind knob because there's no light meter. But you have on this side, you've got some numbers which are the input values for your GOST. Uh, I, um, they are the Russian values, there's no ASA values, only the GOST, but it's a reminder dial. So, where's the rewind knob for this? It's here. It's on the side here, that's where you, you rewind your film by turning that knob there. Now the inter other interesting differences I've found is with the lens. They're both at N61, which I believe is an Industar, and the logo here, where it's made in Russia, in the Moscow factory, the same logo on both lenses. There's the logo. I can't remember the name of the factory, but they're both the same. This one is marked 2.8, 52 millimeter focal length. This one, which is all the same lens, N61, which I think is the Industar, it's marked 2.8, 53mm focal length. Now that's strange, there's one millimetre difference in the focal length of the lenses. And I wonder what is the reason for that, because the flange is exactly the same. They're both um, the old M39 screw-in, and the range finder cam's the same there. The lens mount is exactly the same. Both M39 screw in. I don't know what is the difference, why they have the difference between the two focal lengths of the lenses. But we'll concentrate on the Mark III now because that's the main differences. We'll leave the lens off for a minute. Between the three and the four, that's when they've got the, the meter in. I've done, done a few photographs with this, but the film was as a test film and they came out a bit thin, underexposed, so I've not done any prints. But it has a, the focal plane shutter and it all works nicely. You wind it on, remember, before you do anything. Zip, it goes back at the back and exposes your film. You must, with the Russians, remember, wind it first before you set the delayed action. Otherwise you can jam it. This is the delayed action button. All the Russian cogs are going nicely. Yes, here it goes. Wait a minute. Yeah, zip, here we are. Now what I found is this one had difficulty to undo the back. I put some, I had difficulty getting these in the right position before the back would come over. But now, hopefully, I've, un I've got them in the right position, and hopefully, oops, the I've got managed to get the back off. Now what I've done, I put a little drop of oil on a piece of cloth, and I wiped down here with a minute amount of oil down on the metal here, where it pushes in to close the back. A very minute amount, because it, it, it's very, very old now, from the 1970s, I think, on early 1980s, had never been serviced, but it's very good condition. So this is the spool take-up here, where you put your film leader. 
and it's removable. Now the other thing was, it is extremely stiff to take out the spool where you attach the film. So I put a minute amount of lubrication on there so that your spool was slipping nicely and it will come out easily again. This is how you load the film in these Russian cameras. You get a film, you find the emulsion side here, and you put it underneath the clip. Look at the way here, here we are. There's the clip. You put it in underneath there like that until it goes inside one of the little holes. That little pointer thing has to go into one of the holes. Then, you push that on to your hopefully now lubricated spindle, pull it across, try to make certain you, you can feel where your thumb it goes onto a sprocket, push it into the take up spool there, then take up the slack so that it's nice and tight. Now how you're doing it in a war zone, now the Russians did in World War II with their feds and their zorkies under fire trying to load their Russian film, I don't know. Because it takes a long time to get it right. If you don't, it all jams up. Yeah, that's all correct there. Then put on the back, line it up carefully. And if it's had a minute amount of lubrication, it should now go in the slot. You see, these have, these have to be just the right way round before they go in. There we are. That's gone in. And turn it. It turns. It sh they should go flat. Yes, like that. Like that. That's correct. Now wind it. Release it once. Yes. Now, wind it again. You have to set the frame counter yourself to number one. Oh, that is set now to number one by by magic folks it's already set so now you can start photographing so that is how you set the film reminder for the frame counter now here is a minute little dot opposite 30 that means it's set to 1 30th of a second because i used a flash to take some pictures the synchronization speed is 1 30th or slower than one thirtieth. You can put it on a fifteenth or quarter, eighth, or quarter, half. It lets more ambient light. But I did it on a thirtieth, and I checked the sharpness of the lens with my flash. And this particular lens is the resolution is not so good as the fifty-three millimeter one on my Mark IV fed. At wider aperture f four and two point eight. I didn't think the resolution was quite as good. And I made certain there was no camera shape because the flash went off at two thousandths of a second. Not quite so sharp. Now if you want to change it, you mustn't go between 30th and one second that way because you can jam the shutter. If you want to change it, you've got to lift it up and go backwards this way to set your other speeds. And there's a, you've got to watch the minute little dot where it fits. If you've got good eyesight, that little dot is opposite 250. That should be 250th of a second. Now wind it. You never turn the dial without having it wound. See if we can get a slower speed because it, it goes against some extra springs. You can hear the slow cogs coming into place. Now, this minute little dot is opposite four, which should be a quarter of a second. Yet yeah, sound like a quarter of a second. Yes. Now see if we can get it on round to one here, which is one second. So lift it and turn it. It's a load of load of spring pressure to, to get it round. So trying to do it in a rush, you can't do it. Little dot is now opposite one second. Yes, it sounds like one second. 
Now we can try the delayed actions round. It's all, it should be safe. I've wound it on first. It should be, there we are. I've exposed the film. Oh, that, that was the test film, luckily. <laughs> I thought myself, I didn't think I had a film in, but of course I just loaded the test film, didn't I? <laughs> That's it. You can see the test film. There it is. In the film plane. That's the test film I loaded. I had me worried for the moment. <laughs> now the film, the flash synchronization is here. Where you plug your flash, and I plug my flash in there. Because it's manually only clockwork, there's no electronics, there's no electric hot shoe there, only what you call a cold shoe. But here we have an adjustment for your eyesight. You can turn this and look through the viewfinder, and when the rangefinder rectangle, which is a little rectangle, it appears in the window here, the rangefinder spot is in that little viewfinder there. When it's nice and sharp, you should have it adjusted for your eyesight. And then, of course, you line up the two images so that they are together like that, and your rangefinder then is correct. And your lens is put on with minimum focus distance. That was a trick. And then you can screw it on like that straight away and get the thread straight away. Then you can turn that to bring it back to infinity. And your lens is now screwed in. And it all works. Now to rewind the film, you have to get the lever out of the way first. And you press this little knurled bit down towards the letter B. Now what B stands for, I don't know. Or it might be eight, I don't know. It looks like... It's in Russian anyway, so you turn that, you turn that round like that, and then press it down, then that releases the take up spool, and you can rewind your film back into your cassette. So we'll see if we can open up quickly to show you that action. See if I can get the back off, now it's been lubricated. Um, here we are. Ah, there we are. There's the film. It should be rewinding in back into the cassette. All nice. And when you hear click, click like that, you know it's come out of the take up spool and you can take it out and either process it yourself or send it away for processing to get some good clear snaps. So there we are folks, there's not much else to say about this wonderful machine, the Russian Fed Mark III. And one of these days, we'll get the back on, even the guy who bought it said he had difficulty with getting the back, but here we are, it's, it's better now. Little bit of lubrication works wonders on these old Russian cameras. So that's it for now. I hope you'll follow me the next time I have a video to upload. Thanks for watching this one.